In Flutter, everything is a widget. But what are widgets? Widgets are like Legos, and they're the building blocks of Flutter apps. We can combine them together to build amazing apps with complex user interfaces. Based on the values that are passed into widgets, they change their appearance. So how do we build an app using these widgets? Let's start with a fresh Flutter project and empty out our main.dart file. The first thing we have to do is import material.dart, as that contains all of the widgets we're going to use. Next, let's create our main function, which is the entry point to our app, and calls runApp, passing in a stateless widget called myApp. In Flutter, we have two different types of widgets, stateless and stateful. Stateless widgets are widgets that never change. A couple of examples are text and icon widgets. Stateful widgets, on the other hand, change their appearance when a user interacts with them, or they receive data. A few examples are checkboxes, text fields, and sliders. These widgets need to maintain their current state when the user interacts with them. Just imagine how annoying it is to tap on a checkbox that doesn't update. Let's get back to building our app. Inside of my app, we need to have our build method return a material app. Material app is the backbone of our Flutter app. This widget manages our top-level navigator for navigation between screens and allows us to easily keep a consistent theme throughout our app. We can hide the debug banner by setting debug show checked mode banner to false. We're going to set home to another stateless widget called home screen that returns a scaffold widget. Scaffold implements the basic material design visual layout structure, making adding widgets like app bars and floating action buttons super easy. We use the keyword const so the text and icon widgets do not rebuild as they do not change. We want to avoid unnecessary rebuilds to optimize performance when our widget tree renders. Now let's add a list view builder to our scaffold's body. The item builder contains a context then index in its callback. Let's use this to display a bunch of list tiles with text. If we want to style our text, we can simply add a text style with the properties we want to change, like font size, font weight, and decoration. Right now, there's an infinite amount of list tiles. To limit the amount of list tiles, we can set the list view's item count to any number. Let's try to add a button right next to our text. To do this, we can wrap our text in a row widget and add an outline button to the list of children. Since these are a bit too close to each other, we can space them out by setting the main axis alignment to main axis alignment dot space evenly. When our users tap on one of the list tiles, we want to move them to another screen. We can add on tap to our list tile that calls navigator.ofcontext.push to navigate our users to a stateless widget called another screen with a material page route. To give our users a visual indicator to press to return to the home screen, we can add a scaffold widget with an app bar to make the back button appear. Now let's add a widget called page view and let the user swipe left and right through some containers. We'll make a page view dot builder that returns a widget called panel. Panel takes in an index containing a colored container with a column widget as its child. The column has a text and an icon. When I swipe left and right, I can see the next and previous panels. In order to style our container, we have to add a box decoration. Let's set the border radius and box shadow. One thing to note is that we have to move our color inside of the box decoration, or else we'll get an error. And I'm thinking this red color is pretty boring, so I'm going to spice up my container by adding a decoration image that displays an image from the internet. This looks a lot better. The last thing we're going to do is turn another screen into a stateful widget and change the appearance of the container based on the state of the screen. With your cursor over the stateless widget, hit Control period on Windows or command period on Mac, and hit enter on convert to stateful widget. Now we're going to add a private boolean called show modified container to the top of our screen and set it to false. Let's remember to pass this boolean into our panel and we'll modify the container's border radius based on show modified container. We need a way to modify show modified container and trigger our UI to rebuild. I'm going to add a floating action button and set the onPress method to call setState and set show modified container to the opposite of its current value. If you leave out setState here, 
the variable will still update, but the widget tree will not rebuild, and we won't actually see our container change. When we click on our floating action button, the UI updates accordingly. But this feels a bit harsh. How can we make a smoother transition between the two states? Luckily, all we have to do is change our container into an animated container, and then add a duration of 500 milliseconds. Now when we tap on the button, the container animates for half a second. And that's all for now. We just went through a bunch of commonly used Flutter widgets. If you're interested in exploring more widgets, you should definitely check out the widget catalog in the official Flutter docs. I recommend looking through the material design and Cupertino sections to get an idea of what's possible with just the built-in Flutter widgets. If you want an interactive way to browse widgets, take a look at the examples in the Flutter gallery. This video is part of my Flutter for Beginners course on my website, marcusing.com. Make sure you check it out. I look forward to seeing you there. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and check out the repo on GitHub. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.